Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Parrot Paradise. How's everyone's day going on safari so far? Yeah. Good, that's great to hear. Well, first off, we would like to thank you all for making our presentation a part of your visit with us here today. Our goal is to share our passion for birds with you all, with the hopes that you're able to gain a better appreciation and understanding, not only for our unique collection of birds, but for the over 10,000 different bird species that we share our planet with. Now that being said, you can see birds pretty much anywhere. Maybe they're flying around in your own backyard, the mascot of your favorite sports team, or even the face of your favorite children's cereal. This is the case of our first bird joining us. We have Papaya. She is our chestnut mandible toucan, otherwise known as a Swainton's toucan. Now these birds do live in the dense rainforests of Central and South America, and they typically will live in small tree cavities. Now these birds do have a unique bone structure to allow them to do so. Their bones are in a ball and socket formation, which allows them to tuck their tails right up against their head so they can fit into those small tree cavities. Now you will notice she is eating fruit today. These birds are called frugivores, simply meaning their diet consists mainly of fruit, but during the breeding season, they require higher protein levels. So they're going to use their bill to swoop in to neighboring nests to eat their eggs and fledglings. Now she will also use her bill for thermal regulation. So just like the radiator of your car, she can adjust her internal body temperature based on her surroundings through using her bill. I do believe she has done an excellent job kicking off our presentation for us today. How about a big round of applause for Kaya, our chestnut mandible toucan. Now I'm sure you would all agree with me that Papaya was quite a beautiful bird. However, no bird seems to capture the attention of our audiences quite like the National Bird of India. So here he is now. This is Raj. He's our Indian key fowl. Now you'll probably recognize him more commonly as a peacock, which indicates he's a male. Females are pea hens and babies are pea chicks. Now we can identify him as a male because of that beautiful blue coloration to his head and his neck, and typically that long elaborate train. Now as you can see, his train is pretty sparse today. It is the end of the breeding season. So he's dropped all of his train feathers, but will grow them all back again for next year's breeding season. The females look a lot different as they're more brown in coloration, allowing them to camouflage in when incubating their eggs. He did a great job showing off his beauty for you all today. That was Raj, our Indian pea fowl. Now Raj and Papaya, they sure were beautiful, but it's not all about beauty in the bird world. Some birds' best features are actually their very own intelligence. So flying on out, we're going to have Crowjo, and Crowjo is our African pied crow. Now he's part of the Corbett family, along with ravens, magpies, and jays. As you can see, he's going to do a little bit of a recycling routine to show that he loves the environment. As crows you get the bad reputation of being dirty birds, as they are seen along highways picking up garbage and roadkill. But they're actually acting as nature's garbage men, as they are cleaning up and help getting rid of any germs or bacteria that could be harmful for you and I. As you can tell, Crowjo is a great help to have around, always cleaning up the mess that we made. And his final message for everyone is to always reduce, reuse, recycle. He's going to head on home. Let's give it up for Crowjo, our African pie crow. Now, so far during this presentation, we've introduced you to some very unique bird species, but now we're going to switch it up and introduce you to the only mammal capable of true flight. Does anyone know what mammal can fly? Just shout on out if you know the answer. A bat, and that is correct. Well, joining us from the side now, we're going to have Dewey, and Dewey is our Indian flying fox. Now, I would say get your cameras ready, because we're going to bring Dewey nice and close, but you don't have to worry. He's not going to fly into the audience and try to suck your blood, because Dewey here is a large fruit bat. So that means he likes to eat fruit, pollen, nectar, and flowers. Now doing all fruit bats, they're very important for the ecology of the forest that they live in. So as they are flying from tree to tree, they do cross-pollinate the trees. And also when Dewey's eating the fruit, he actually only eats the fruit juices, and then he spits out the pulp and the seeds. By spitting out these seeds, it spreads it around the forest floor and leads to a stronger and healthier forest. Now here in Ontario, we do have our very own bat counterpart species. Quite a bit smaller than Dewey here, we have the little brown bat. Now you may see this bat fly around your very own homes and cottages at nighttime. They're really good for our ecology as well because the little brown bat, they're insectivores, so they do keep our insect population down, especially those pesky mosquitoes. But as you can see with Dewey here, he is hanging upside down, and that's actually the natural position of a bat. 
So with that being said, he'll eat, he'll sleep, he'll even go to the bathroom while all hanging upside down. Now this can be done through several physiological adaptations that does restrict blood flow to his head. But of course what makes these guys so special is their ability to fly. So we are going to do a brief flight demonstration. Dewey will take flight from the glove all the way up to the hammock. Now as he decides to spread his wings, I'm going to take notice of how unique they are. So they're actually more similar to our very own human hand than they are with the wings of a bird. He has four elongated finger bones with stretchy leather skin in between that helps him catch flight. And when he lands onto that hammock, he actually hooks on, and those hooks are the equivalent to our very own thumb bones. Now they sometimes do have a little bit of a crash landing, but don't worry. That is quite normal in how they would crash into the canopies of the rainforest as they are foraging around looking for their next tasty meal. But I know Dewey, he isn't a bird in our presentation, but I really hope introducing him to you today helps you have a better appreciation. Such a misunderstood creature. Let's give it up for Dewey, our Indian flying fox. Now birds and mammals, they have adapted to feed on a large variety of different food items. As you just saw, some love feed on flowers and fruit, while others feed on live prey. Well, here at Parrot Paradise, we do have our very own expert hunter. So join us from the back hatch, will be the largest bird that we fly here. Her name is Maybelline, our Abyssinian ground hornbill. Now Maybelline oh here, gosh. she is native to Africa, and as her name suggests, she does prefer being more of a ground hunter. But as you saw her fly up to the center of the stage, she showed off an impressive six foot wingspan from tip to tip. Now, of course, I did introduce Maybelline as our expert hunter, so we're going to start things off with a little bit of an aerial hunt today. Toss up her favorite treat, and she catches it no problem on the way down, showing off an amazing beak to eye coordination that would allow her to catch birds and insects while on the wing. Now, Maybelline, she would never pass up on an opportunity of getting a tasty meal, so she's running across the ground, happens to come across a small creature, she'll catch it no problem. Well, here we toss down her favorite toy it's the deadly rubber snake. Now she's going to go on up, grab the snake in one particular location, that's right at the back of the snake's head. She actually doesn't know if the snake is going to be venomous or not, so she wants to grab in this position each and every time just to be safe. But as you can tell, she's very proud of what she's caught, she's showing it off to everyone. But this rubber snake doesn't put up much of a fight, and a real snake actually would. So we're going to make this hunt a little more authentic and start to play some tug war with Maybelline. Now as you can see, her attitude has changed, she's in hunting mode now. She's gonna shake, she's gonna twist, all that she can do to win this fight. And she's gonna stay low to the ground, fight onto that snake right at the tip of her beak, because that's where she does have maximum pressure. And maybe she'll make sure to keep her feet back in case she accidentally lets go of that snake and won't turn around and bite her. But once she thinks she has won this fight, instincts would tell her to give it a couple good final shakes before swallowing that entire snake back whole. Now of course, a rubber snake, it really doesn't taste so well, so we've trained her to trade off for one of her favorite treats. Now I'll invite Maybelline up on this box, and it's a great photo opportunity. One thing to point out in particular is her beautiful, long eyelashes. That's actually how she got her name Maybelline, because of the cosmetic products. Except for those eyelashes, they're actually modified feathers, so they are used for similar purposes, as they keep out dust and debris that is floating around while she's out in the hunts. With those two successful hunts under her belt today, she's going to run it home. Let's show some love for Maybelline, our Abyssinian Jen Hongo. Alright, now that Maybelline is safely tucked away, we are just about ready to bring out our next bird. But before we do, I'm going to need the help of a volunteer. Is anyone feeling brave today? Let's see, there's lots of hands. How about both of you there with the blue shirt on and that kind of pink purple shirt? Do you guys both want to come on down, come all the way here to Paul? He's going to show you exactly what you guys need to do for us today. Now, I hope they are feeling brave. They have just volunteered to feed the most valuable bird in the entire world. Now here at African Lion Safari, we don't have just one, not two, but four of these incredible birds. And the reason why they're so valuable might just happen to surprise you. Come here on that back corner, we have our chickens. Now the reason of course why chickens are so valuable is due to their impact and contribution on the poultry industry. There are three times as many chickens on earth than there are people. They've done a great job coming out for a quick snack today. Well, let's have a big round of applause for our helpful volunteers. Thanks so much for your help today. Now birds, they do both lies for a variety of different reasons, whether that be for communication, defense, or to mark out and claim their territory. You might know our next bird from his famous laughing call. We're going to hide, and he is our laughing kookaburra. Now, kookaburras, they are the largest member in the kingfisher family. 
He might even look a little familiar here in Ontario. We do have the belted kingfisher. However, unlike other members in the kingfisher family, kookaburras prefer eating rodents rather than fish. But what they will do is go to the edge of their territory, let out a big rolling laughing call, then wait and listen for their neighbor to respond. This indicates to them where one territory ends and the next one does begin. Now these birds, they have been given a nickname and that is the Bushman's alarm clock. And that's because their call indicates to farmers out in Australia when it is time to head on home after a long day's work. Now they will stick around with their parents, helping to raise future generations until they reach about four years of age themselves when they can go off and establish a territory of their very own. Now I'm sure you will get to hear their loud rolling laughing call while you're on safari today as we do have two other kookaburras just in the display behind the stands. But he has done a great job showing off his flights for us today. That was Hyde, our laughing kookaburra. Now, so far today, we have shown you birds that show beauty, intelligence, and the ability to fly. But here in Parrot Paradise, we believe that there is one group of birds able to demonstrate all three of these amazing qualities. That is, of course, our parrots. Now, there are 350 different species of parrots, but the sad reality is that over 50% of these are facing extinction. Factors such as habitat loss, destruction of nesting sites, and trapping for the illegal pet trade are just a few of the reasons why their wild populations are declining so quickly. Here at African Lion Safari, we are lucky enough to house a variety of these different parrot species, some of which we'd like to introduce to you all right now. Now, as we round that back corner, you are going to see just how bright and beautiful these birds are. Parrots are easily some of the most beautiful birds in the world, and they do have numerous distinguishing features. From the smaller budgies all the way to the larger macaws, parrots have that notable hooked beak. Now, they will use this beak to crack into hard-to-open nuts, as well as using the bone that's in their tongues to tap into fruits. Now, they will also use their beak as a third foot, which Olivia, our blue-throated macaw, is demonstrating, allowing them to be very acrobatic by nature. Now, you'll notice that their feet are very unique. Their toes are what is called zygodactyl. Having two toes facing forward and two facing backwards allow them to grab onto the branches and trees quite nicely. Now, they do spend most of their time in the treetops, but it is a remarkable sight to see them take flight. They can reach speeds of 50 to 60 kilometers an hour, and they'll use those beautiful long tail feathers to steer themselves, as well as fanning them out to have a safe landing. However, there is no mistaking a parrot simply for their colors alone, but they are able to see in a wide range of different colors. This allows them to identify one another, as well as to identify ripe versus unripe fruits. Now, we would love to prove to you all today that our birds are able to see in color, but again, I just can't do it alone. I'm going to need the help of another volunteer today. Is anyone else willing to come down and give us a hand? Let's see, there's lots of hands up, lots of hands up. How about you in that red t-shirt up there? Do you want to come on down and give us a hand today? Well, here on this table, we do have four different colored rings. We have red, yellow, blue, and green. Now, Indigo, she's our blue and gold macaw, and she's been trained to pick out only those blue rings and put them onto the post. Now we do have our helpers come down to make sure that we're not putting those blue rings in the same spot every time, and that's a new unique challenge for Indigo. Now Indigo, she has been doing these for quite a while. She's actually 27 years old this year. However, these macaw species, they can actually live 60 to 80 years in the wild, even up to 100 years under human care. Our volunteers, they always seem to do a variety of different methods. Some make a big messy pile, some do a big tower. Looks like we are doing a little bit of a tower method today with those blue ones hidden throughout. Not taking it easy on her, so see if she can figure this one out today. So she goes up onto the table, waddles on over confidently, starts digging through. She finds that first blue ring, no problem. What about that second one, Indigo? It's buried at the bottom. She'll go over, thinks about it for a second, and there she goes. She grabs that second ring, proving that, of course, they can see in color. Now, Indigo, she's done a great job. Let's give a big round of applause for help a volunteer. Now I do have one final question, and if you know the answer, just shout it on out. But what are parrots most famous for? Talking. Talking, that is correct. Well here at Parrot Paradise, the star of our presentation are always our talking Amazons. So here we have for you today is Wasabi. He's our yellow-fronted Amazon. 
He's spoiled a little chatterbox, so let's see what he has for us today. Well, usually he likes to start things off by greeting everyone. Hello. Hello. Pretty straightforward hellos. But he does like to introduce himself, so go ahead and tell everyone what your name is. An excited introduction of Wasabi. He doesn't stop there, though. He always follows that up with a polite question. How are you? How are you? A cheerful how are you to add to that. Now you can't tell by looking at him, but Wasabi is a male yellow-fronted Amazon. Now that's because with the males and the females of most parrot species, they look exactly the same. The only true way to tell them apart is through DNA testing. But we didn't have much trouble figuring out that Wasabi was a male. He gave us a couple of clues. For example, he always gets very flirtatious anytime a female Amazon is around. A little bit of a whistle to get the girl's attention. I'm not too sure that does the trick. But once those girls are up nice and close, he loves to blow them kisses. A couple cute kisses for the girls. Now these birds are very playful by nature, and Wasabi is no exception. So this is his favorite game. He loves to play with his trainers. Yes, he loves to be tickled. And we can't resist, we go over, we give him a little scratch. But we quickly realize he's not playing the game with us, he's playing the game on us. Because sometimes when we give him a tickle, he likes to turn around and give us a bite on our finger. But we quickly figured out that he's not trying to hurt us, he just likes what we say when he bites. And sadly, that sounds exactly like us. Now, believe it or not, Boasabi is a huge fan of the holidays. Christmas is definitely his favorite one, because every time the season is upon us, he gets in the holiday spirit by saying the phrase that Santa Claus is most famous for. <laughs> this is quite the festive little bird. Now, he is also very musically talented as well. Parrots are pretty well known for their whistling and singing ability. So us as trainers thought, why not? We'll teach Boasabi a couple of songs. Now the only problem with that is we are honest enough to admit that we are terribly, terribly off key. You might have to use your imagination, but to help you out, I'll get him to warm up his voice first. Well, I don't know about you, that sounds perfectly in tune to me. Now how about that first song? A very patriotic and very off-key national anthem. Now for his next tune, I was wondering by a show of hands, does it happen to be anybody's birthday today? Anyone celebrating a birthday on safari? All right, maybe not today, but what about in September? It's just around the corner. Any excited birthdays coming up? All right, a few hands up. Well, that certainly wasn't everyone, and I don't want to leave anyone out. So raise your hand if you're celebrating a birthday in the next year or so. <laughs> that should be everybody. Well, whatever your special day may be, this song's for you. A little bit of a birthday wish from Wasabi. Well, as you can see, he is pretty talented. With all that talent, does come with a lot of hard work. Wasabi is quite proud of where he works, so much so, it's his favorite thing to tell people. So Wasabi, go ahead and tell everyone, where do you work? African Lion Safari. That's right here, it's right here at African Lion Safari. And at the Safari, we do have a pretty famous motto. We love to tell our guests to have a wild day. Wasabi, what exactly do you tell our guests? Go wild. Go wild. Go wild. If you go wild from Wasabi to all of you today. He's done a great job. Let's hear it for Wasabi. Now here at African Lion Safari, we do believe that the first steps in conservation are, of course, education. So we certainly hope you learned a few things about what makes birds so amazing during our presentation. Now on a little bit of a conservation note, I do want to draw your attention back to Olivia on the far side, our blue-throated macaw. She is a little bit more special than the other birds you met today, and that's because Olivia is a critically endangered species. 
They can only be found out in Bolivia, where unfortunately their wild numbers are estimated at a couple of hundred individuals, making them the most endangered macaw in the wild today. But we do want to leave you on more of a brighter note, so we are incredibly proud to announce that in partnership with the World Parrot Trust, we decided to look towards the future of this incredible species by starting our own breeding conservation project. And just last year, we hatched our first two blue-throated macaws. I'd like to introduce you all to Levi and Betty. So come on down, ask us any questions you have, not only about our conservation initiatives, but of any of the birds you met today. And a friendly reminder that around the corner in our conservation center in 10 minutes time will be our final birds of prey flying demonstration. But for right now, I think Wasabi has one last thing he'd like to say. Have fun, have fun. A little and a foot wave, a little wave, goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us here at Parrot Paradise. Enjoy the rest of your day at African Lion Safari. Goodbye.